The IDF is widening its ground operations in Gaza, tanks are inching closer on three areas where hundreds of thousands of civilians remain. The map on your screens shows exactly where the ongoing ground offensive is taking place. From the north of the Strip to the south, the Israeli military is stepping up its efforts to eliminate the Hamas militants. The United Nations says over 600,000 people are under evacuation orders in the so-called safe zones in southern Gaza. Civilians are pleading with the soldiers and the Israeli government to spare them because most, if not all, have nowhere to go as the shelters are full to the brim. But not just on ground, the Israeli forces are now focusing their efforts on destroying the Hamas tunnels. According to a report in the Wall Street Journal citing American officials, Israel has assembled a large system of water pumps to flood the tunnels under the Gaza Strip in a bid to flush out the fighters. The map on your screens shows the tunnels found by the Israel Defense Forces during Operation Protective Edge. These tunnels are approximately three miles long and reach deep into Israeli territory. It is believed that they were to be used by Hamas to hold Israeli soldiers or civilians that they hold hostage. Since the ground offensive started on October 27th, the Israeli military has discovered at least 800 shafts leading to Hamas's vast subterranean network of tunnels and bunkers. Of the 800 tunnels, the IDF says it has destroyed at least 500. The military also added that the tunnels were destroyed using a variety of operational methods, including detonation and by sealing off. And now the IDF says they will destroy the remaining tunnels by flooding them with salt water. But how will releasing salt water affect the already miserable Gaza Strip? There are many things to look at, beginning with its catastrophic effect on the civilians. Israel unleashing seawater in that water on Gaza will further put civilians on the edge as they continue to reel from severe fresh water shortage. Further, as Gaza's aquifer, from which the population draws drinking water and water for other uses, is already becoming saltier with a rise in sea level, requiring more energy to fuel the desalination plants on which the population depends on. As per the United Nations, the aquifer before the war provided 83 litres of water per person. But since the IDF ground offensive, now Palestinians received not more than three liters a day. Lastly, the flooding could also affect Gaza's already polluted soil and hazardous substances stored in tunnels could sip into the ground, further affecting the groundwater table. Even though Israel has not made a final decision to go ahead with the plan, it is an indication of the extent that the Israeli forces will go to eliminate Hamas. Nathan Sharansky is the former Deputy Prime Minister of Israel. He is now joining us live from Tel Aviv. Saar, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Shalom. Saar, does this plan to flood Gaza in the list disturb you or shock you? Well, I have to say that, uh, there is no clear plan about it. It's one of the... Uh, possibilities which is discussed and exactly the concerns which you just now expressed, these are the concerns which are under consideration. How really, first of all, how, whether it can be effective at all, it's not yet clear. Second, how it can influence uh, on the climate, on the surrounding, on the future life uh, there. One phrase which you just now said is absolutely true. Israel is going to do everything to eliminate Hamas, because Hamas not only killed in few hours 1,400 of our citizens, not only made unbelievable tortures, uh, raping, mutilating, burning alive people, but he, it made it very clear that they're going to do everything to destroy Israel. So we are going to kill them before they kill us. That's for sure. Uh, there is also, you have to understand, there are more than 500 kilometers of the tunnels, 500, that's an unbelievable figure. Uh, there is no way now to know whether it is even possible to use uh, water uh, to destroy these tunnels, but uh, what we are going to do, we are going by all means to reach those who were uh, the leaders of this awful massacre 
and right. to make sure that there will uh, that the, there'll be no threat to the existence of our uh, of our state anymore. And also, we are doing everything to liberate the hostages, children and women uh, who were taken and who are kept and uh, who are tortured at this moment. But yes, well, that is one of the ideas which is discussed. And uh, the leading specialists, not only from Israel, but also from the other countries, are uh, involved in discussion. I think it's more probable that it will not be used, but that's one of the opportunities which is checked. All right. It's okay now that uh, this plan is under discussion, so let's not uh, delve too much into that. But, sir, yeah. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that it is not the international community who will take charge of the strip, but Israel. In your view, is that even feasible or even practical in sense of will, will it work eventually? Uh, I want to say that our Prime Minister, our Prime Minister let's quote him correctly, said that there is no chance that somebody will be responsible for the security of Israel, but Israeli army. We are not going, I hope we are not going, at least I never heard that from our prime minister or anybody else, that we are going to control the life of citizens of Gaza. We are going to control the security. What means that in the few, few years to come, our army will be guaranteeing the security, not Hamas, and not some international forces which when, whenever they were asked to control security, they could not deliver it. But as to economical life, cultural life, everyday, uh, everyday life of the two millions of citizens of Gaza, we want that international bodies and Arab countries, Arab countries, those Arab countries which recognize our right to exist, they will take responsibility at least for, for the uh, restoration of normal life mm -hmm. in Gaza, and then hopefully there will be the leadership, uh, Palestinian leadership, which will be really not only uh, ready to uh, to build to rebuild Gaza, but also will be ready to cooperate with us in making our life and their life secure. But in the days to come, immediately after Hamas will be destroyed, there is no no way that anybody will guarantee our security, will prevent. Uh, future attacks on Israel, but our army. Sir, finally, talking about the proportion of this war, the international community is time and again cautioning Israel on how they move ahead with their operations. As much as the community is still adamant on Israel's right to defend itself, don't you see that support now moving to the Palestinians? Well, uh, I really, have, you know, I'm a mathematician, and I would, I know very well what the word proportional means. And I'm really surprised and even bewildered when I hear demand that we will be proportional. Proportional, what it means? It means that we will not rape more than 200 uh, Palestinian girls. It means that we will not burn alive more than 800 uh, uh, Palestinians. That we, <coughs> Uh, what it means proportional? Here came some kind of beasts who made un unbelievable torturing and killing our people. And we are not targeting even one girl and one boy and one civilian. We are not targeting them. We are targeting only terrorists. The fact that terrorists are using civ Palestinian civilians as their shield, as their living shield, we are trying to do everything that they population, Palestinian population will, uh, will move. We would try to be, do everything to make sure that hospitals and schools are not used as the basis of these terrorists. But yes, we are going to reach these terrorists to whatever it costs. And as to proportionality, they are targeting our civilians. They are uh, hijacking, kidnapping our civilians. We are not targeting even one girl, boy, or civilian on the Palestinian side. All right. Natan Sharansky is the former Deputy Prime Minister of Israel. Natan, thank you very much for talking to We On Wild is One today. Thank you.
Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.